Well, it's good to see you. Hey, Nick. I'm really excited yeah. about this. It's been a, been a while. I know, uh, I know, I know. Bill referred you, and, yeah. and uh, uh, been looking forward to working with you. So, you all ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Fantastic. So, uh, I just want to go over. We had a, we had a quick call last week to clarify some information. Just want to go over it with you, and make sure we're still on the same page. Okay. Uh, you're still uh, you're not working with another agent. Um, you, you have a lease that ends June first. Right. Is that about right. June first is when it ends. Yeah. Okay. And you're ready to move when you want to be in something before that lease ends. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, the rent will go up a little bit afterwards. Okay. Back to the month of August. Okay. I'm okay with that, but ideally, I'd like to just be moved in. That way, I can get set up and be ready. You know, enjoy my summer. Gotcha. You want to enjoy the summer? Mm -hmm. Totally get that. Uh, if, if 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 for some reason we're not able to move June first, what happens? I know you have to pay month to month. How does that how's that gonna work out for you? Is it gonna cause you financial? Uh no, no, I mean I, I just I really I really want that to happen. Just okay. convenience wise it's gonna be What's driving you to move right now? Oh well I just uh, we we owned a home I owned a home um, several years ago and uh, we had a short sale. And oh, then, um, okay. yeah, and then now I'm on my own, so I I'd like to get back into a okay. house. Okay. You know, a what do you? What, and the house is going to bring you financial security. What do you? How do you? Well, I mean, it's it's a smart thing to do, right? Right. An investment property. Oh, I, I definitely definitely a good thing to do. Do you see the market going down, or? Well, I, we're going to talk a little bit about the market, okay. uh, specifically uh, for a little bit, a few minutes from now. Okay. But um, I just want to make sure I understand your situation. Yeah. No, it's just okay. I think um, I don't want to. Pay, I can what I'm paying. I, I don't want to throw the money away anymore. I'd rather just own property. The smart move, long okay. term. And um, you know, I want to start to rebuild. Gotcha. Yeah. And 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 you mentioned that you were going to talk to a lender. Have you done that? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Here's my pre-call letter. Right oh, there. perfect. Fantastic. Yeah. I have a plug. I want to talk about this too. Yeah, it's my bank. Yeah. So very good. Very good. Let's talk. We're going to talk about this in a few minutes. So, so if you're, uh, I think that's all the questions I have for you, and we'll, we'll we'll get started. Okay. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to do today, Paul. Is I'm going to t tell you what you can expect from me in the process of buying a home. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about some of the market conditions and what you're looking for in, in, the, in the housing market out there in Austin, and then I'll I'll talk to you a little bit about why it makes sense to hire a professional help. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Anything else you want to make sure we cover? No, no. I mean, if I have questions along the way, I'll ask. Perfect. Okay. And I got a little package here for you, some information that I'll give you at the end that you can take home with you for to review and look at. So. Sure. First, let's look at what you can expect from me. Okay. Um, and and by the way, uh, ask me questions anytime you want to. Um, at the end of this this uh, discussion that we have today, uh, if you're confident and you're ready, you can hire me and we can get started on looking to okay. find your house. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So first, let's talk about what you can expect from me. It's really important that you have a strategy when you go out and look for a house. Now you you had one before, so mm -hmm. so. Was there a lot of turmoil there? Did it take you a long time to find one? Um, I mean, a little bit. We kind of were, were scattered around. We were okay. trying to find something. And a little bit of wasted time. We never right? sat down initially. We just kind of, I, I told them what I wanted, and, and then um, that agent went out and you know, sent me a list, and okay. I started the process that way. So. Okay. Well, I, I want to do a really good job, and, and having a strategy is the first step in that. Yeah, that makes sense. So so that we, we don't waste your time. We find you what you want. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Secondly, What's really important to me is that you get a good deal. We, we do the best we can to get you the most value for your money, and I want to make sure I negotiate aggressively during that process so, so you get uh, a good deal. Does that make sense? No, yeah, that's, is that something you'd want? That's exactly what okay, I want. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Now, um, finding the house is probably only half of the job. It's like the tip of the iceberg. It's actually the, probably the more fun part. Going out and looking at places. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, after after you go under contract, there's the closing process, and that's where I step in and help coordinate the activities of the other parties in the transaction. You got the other agent, you got the appraiser, you got the bank. All those people need, yeah. to, need to follow a timeline to get things done on time, so you close on time and you're in that house by June first. Yeah, yeah I haven't thought about that, but sure, yeah, that makes sense. So, and 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 my job is to. Is so you to, handle all that. We do. Okay. We, we coordinate all that. I've also got a closing coordinator that I work with who come into the picture, and she actually sits at her desk all day and, and keeps everybody on, online with the timeline gotcha. while I oversee everything that goes on and, and, and make sure we've got relationships with people to make sure everybody's being held accountable. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. we want to make sure that everybody does their job so you get in your house on time and there's no hidden surprises. That's great. Does that make sense? No, that's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Perfect. Now. 
here's something that's really important. Uh, you you expect me to be honest with you. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, I'm committing to be honest with you. Okay. What I want is I want you to be honest with me throughout this process. Okay. What do you mean? I, I mean I want you to tell me what you think. Okay. I want if we're looking at houses, I want you to tell me what you think. I don't. I have no vested interest in you buying one house or another. I just want to make sure you get what you want. Mm -hmm. So if I hear about what you don't like, if I hear about what's not going well, it's only going to help me do a better job and, and provide you a good service because that's all that's important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do better than your last agent, not just give you a list and then. Bring you to a house. I want to make sure it's a participatory process. We're both working together, and it only it starts with us being honest. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. I can do that. Okay. Can, right. I, can I get your commitment on that? Absolutely. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Good. 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 All right. So um, you've already got this pre-qualification letter, which is fantastic. Do you know why this is so important? Uh, well, that says I can buy, right? Well, not only does it say you can buy, but it increases my leverage with people when negotiating, because oh, yeah. because having a pre-qualification letter puts you in a category of the seller doesn't have to worry about whether you have the money for the house. Mm -hmm. It's almost like being a cash buyer. So I can, we can go out and make aggressive offers. We've got money in the bank, we're ready to go, and it makes you put you in a better position when negotiating. When I'm negotiating with other people on your behalf. That makes sense. Okay. So sure. I applaud you again uh, for for getting this done and, and, uh, and having it ready to go. Sure. Okay. Now you probably, like most people I meet, have been looking for houses already. Probably surfing the internet and maybe yeah. on some third-party sites. Yeah, we have. Okay. Well, going forward, if, we, if when we start when we start working together, if you see houses on the internet or on other third-party sites, I want you to call me if, if they're of interest to you. Okay. Okay. I I have I work out of the MLS database, which is the primary resource for all all those other third-party databases. It's going to have the most up-to-date information. So like Zillow.com. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I, and I don't want you to wait. I mean, I don't want you to waste your time. Yeah. If you see something you like, give me a call, send me a text, let me know that you, you saw something out there, and I'll vet it for you to make sure it fits your criteria. Mm -hmm. And then if, if we need to, we'll go take a look at it. But I don't want you to waste your time chasing houses that may not be available or may already be off the market. Uh, how's that work for new houses? Like new houses? Yeah. Are you talking about con new construction? Yeah, new, new construction. Oh, sure. It works the same way. Uh, the, if, you, if you decide you want to go, to, to go in that direction, Happy to talk to you about it, give you information about how that works, but you don't want to be in that situation where you're talking to the builder without being represented. Why is that? Well, the builder is the seller of the house. Right. Okay. You, you, they're, they're best. They're going to work in their best interest, which is to take care of the builder and make sure the builder gets what they gets, gets what they want. So you're still going to need somebody to look at the contract, make sure the pricing's right, make sure that all the things that builder needs to do are getting done. And, and represent you in the transaction. Yeah, because I think my brother-in-law, he, I don't think he had a real estate when he went into a new home. That's awful. Yeah. How did that work out for him? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's how. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, so, I, I mean, it, it's not the end of the world, but yeah. but certainly I think that having a realtor represent you is going to help make sure that you get everything that you asked for. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And we can talk about that when you're ready to do that. Just sure. keep that in mind. Uh, you might see for sale by owners as well. Again, any house that you see that you're interested in, just give me a call. We'll talk about it. I'll make sure it works for you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do the background research to make sure it's, it's still available and what we need to do and we'll, we'll go for it. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Perfect. Now, were you aware that um, my commissions get paid by the seller of the house in the transaction? Um, well, I had heard, I, I, well, no, yeah, he, was, he knew that. <laughs> Because I bought a house before, sure. So, um, is there like any other fees or anything I have to worry about on your end? On, on my end, yeah. no fees on my end. Uh -huh. The bank's going to charge you some fees, right. and they're going to give you an estimate they probably already have. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about that? You're, 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 you know, I'm getting paid by the by the seller of the house. Well, it's nice. I don't have to pay. Well, it's nice so you don't have to pay. pay. Yeah. Um, when I sell, I have to pay. I know that. That's right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But it's really important that you're talking to me first. To make sure that you are represented in that transaction. Now, no, nothing comes out of your pocket, but we, we definitely want to make sure everything's above board and we get what you want. Okay. okay. All right. One thing that I like to do differently, uh, a little bit differently, uh, with my clients is I like to actually look for houses that may not be on the market. Is that something that that would be helpful to you? Uh, off market homes. Well, if you're interested in a certain neighborhood or a certain type of house, I might actually go and try to find people that haven't listed their house yet. Try to get you in there first before 
work? Well, I, I, I would do some networking in a, in a neighborhood. I might go to neighborhood associations. I might talk to other realtors. Mm -hmm. We've got some internet sites that, that realtors use to talk about coming soon. Uh, I might do some calling in the neighborhood. Okay. I meet a lot of people at open houses. So uh, yeah, I hear, cool. yeah, I hear about things that are going on, and it might, it might give you a heads up or a, a leg up if we find a house that's not on the market yet, especially if it's a busy neighborhood where things go quickly. Yeah, so, that'd be awesome. So is that, is that, a, is that something you want me to do for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, now what do you know about the different types of properties? Uh, do you know about uh, uh, resales, new builds, uh, uh, bank owned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Short sales. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to do too much work on the house, so okay. a little bit of cosmetic I'm okay with. Okay. Um, what? And, but at the same time, um, some of the new homes that we've been looking in the area, we, we're thinking we might do a little bit more bank for our bonds on the resale side. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, I maybe focus on resales first. Okay. And then, um, but again, I, I don't want to do too much work. I'm okay with like maybe some carpet paint, but major right. stuff. I'm you want to you want to be ready to move in. Yeah, relax, generally, put yeah. your furniture in, kind of relax, and not have to worry about it. Yeah, no major details. Okay, fantastic. All right, we we will talk about that as we start looking at houses and, and narrow down the field. But I'll, I'll make sure that we focus in on houses that are more updated and more ready to move in than, than ones that are. Okay. Okay? Great. Okay, so any other questions about types of houses? No. All right. All right, so now let's talk about the fun part, how I'm going to help you. Okay. All right? Uh, over here, I've got the MLS database up. This is what I use to search for houses, and okay. what, what I'm going to actually give you access to so you can see what's on the market. So if I type in here that we're going to look for a house in Austin, Round Rock area, mm -hmm. I want you to take a look. How many houses do you see there that are available for sale right now? Yeah, several thousand. Yeah, there's over 5,000, right? Yeah. Do you want Do you want to look at 5,000 houses? No. Okay. <laughs> I do not want to look at And I don't want you to look at 5,000 Okay, houses. good, because I don't know. Yeah, that would, be, that would be crazy, right? So what we're going to do is we're going we're to shrink down this, this pool of available houses based on some of the things that we've talked about okay. and see if we can narrow the field a little bit and help make it better for you, easier for you, and more efficient so we're not wasting your time. Okay. So the, the first two cuts I usually make on this large of a database is either neighborhood or price, mm -hmm. or both. Mm -hmm. And you've already indicated to me that you want to live in the 78729 zip code. Right. Great, great area, right here behind the office. Mm -hmm. A lot of activity, close to everything. I can see why you like it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here 78729. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> tell me again what your what your max max price point is. Uh, 375. Okay. So the bank qualifies you at 375. Right. Okay. I, I mean, if I can get lower, that'd be good. Oh, sure, yeah. absolutely. We, we, Never want somebody to buy their max if they don't have to. I totally right. get that. Uh, I'm sure that you'd probably feel better if we, we were at Yeah, a, I mean, I, I'm yeah. willing to go that high, but I know. Okay. I don't want to get well, what, what I'll do is I'll set the search at 78729 and I'll cap it at 375, but okay. you'll be able to see the lower price point houses and you'll be able to see what's out there and kind of start to decide what you see in one neighborhood versus another neighborhood at the same price point. Gotcha. In city. So, if I make this, those two changes, and I type in 78729 in the search parameter, mm -hmm. and I type in 375, look, the list is already gone down yeah. to oh, wow. just just a couple hundred. Yeah. Still a little bit too many, you think? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I probably don't want to look at a couple hundred. I mean, yeah. so I have no, to I, no, 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 okay. no, definitely not. I, I want to make this, again, I want to reinforce, I want to make this easy. So we're going to we're gonna type in here, uh, three bedroom, two bathroom, Okay, and we're going to type in here at least 1,200 square feet. Does mm -hmm. that make sense for you in terms yeah. of size? Yeah, well, I mean, close, I think at least 14. 14, okay. Yeah. So once we do that, once we do those three things, now we're down to just a just 100 or so houses. Yeah, less. Yeah. yeah. So do you think you could sit down with a cup of coffee and kind of scroll through the Yeah, houses? that seems more Perfect. digestible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's start here, all right? So this is already a more bite-sized chunk of what's available in the market. And what we're going to do is... I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. Just remember homework. homework. Yes, homework. We're working together. Okay. Yeah. Homework. Your your homework is going to be to look through this list tonight okay. or in the next couple of days, whenever you have time, mm -hmm. and start to start to mark things that you like and don't like, and that'll start to send me signals about what's working for me and what's not, and it'll help okay. me hone in a process to find what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to take you out and look at 100 houses. 
No. Um, what, what I usually do with folks is I take them out and see four or five houses at a time. Okay. It might take us a couple trips. That's it? It's four or five? Is that, that's normal? That's normal. Um, okay. That normally takes us about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and that's about long enough to really absorb what you're seeing without being overwhelmed. Yeah, and that's what happened to us last time is that we were seeing oh. way too many houses. You're kidding. And um, it was just kind of both emotions. So it's kind of like a like a let's go see house death march kind of thing. It was pretty painful. Yeah. But, I mean, well, I, I so that, that makes sense. I mean, as long as we're looking at properties that we're, you know, that we that's, want to see. That's what I want to do. I want I want to only look at properties that you want to see. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You screening this list will help me see what you like, and then we'll then we'll have a conversation next week uh, or in a couple days, uh, whenever you're ready, uh, and talk about which ones make more sense to you, and then we'll, we'll head out and start to listen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll just keep refining the list. Mm -hmm. Now, while we're talking about that, what's what's the best time and day for you to to talk on the phone? On the phone? Yes. I mean, I can talk um, midday around lunch hour, and then any time after. Any day? Yeah. Okay. And so then um, any time after 4. I mean, I'm out of work by 4. Well, I usually like to make uh, calls with buyers at least once a week if we're not talking more frequently. So I'm going to put you down for a call Wednesday at noon. That works. And if, we, if you're looking and you get busy, which I totally understand, life's busy, you might have time to look, I'm going to make sure I check in with you at least Wednesday at noon once a week. Get you updated, see, to get your feedback, and make sure, sure. we're moving forward. That sounds good. Okay, that way we stay on track. Now, what's the best day for you to go out and look at houses? Um, any day, really. I mean, as long as it's after four. Um, okay. And if they're, if it's, um, you know, the emergency meeting, you think, you think it's, it might go fast, then I could probably squeeze a lunch hour. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's one. Not to look at a bunch, but it looks really good, and I could probably do. Well, let me let me ask you if this might work for you. This this seems to work for most people. Is the first time we go out where we're we're just taking a dipping our toe in the water. We'll look at those first four or five houses. Maybe we'll do it on a weekend or when you're a little bit more relaxed, or maybe in the evening if, if, the, if the light's good. Yeah. Uh, once we get to the point where you're ready to buy, you've seen enough. Of, you've seen enough of the market, so you know what you want, and, and we're narrowed it down. We may need to run out during work to make sure we get ahead of the curve. And, and not get beat to the house by somebody else. Okay. I mean, my goal is that if we find the house you want, once we get in that, that zone where, where you're ready mm -hmm. and we're, we're seeing things we like consistently, yeah. uh, my goal is that if we see a house that day, I want the offer on the table and the selling agent by the end of nine that night so that yeah. we, we don't miss any opportunity. Okay, Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that's okay. good. It is. It's part of my being aggressive about negotiating and, and, and making sure you get what you want. Okay. okay. So uh, does that sound like a good plan? No, that sounds great. Okay, so let's let's take a minute now and, and, and go macro and talk a little bit about the market. Because you picked a very aggressive, hot neighborhood. A lot of hot, hot. A lot of people want to live there. Yeah. And and what I did is I pulled some stats from from MLS, and I just want to take a second and go over what some of these numbers mean, and it'll help us win our conversations as we go start to look at houses. Okay. So I'm 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 familiar. You're familiar with with how the market works. And we can we can shorthand what we need to talk about in terms of understanding the value of a house. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out to you is that in this zip code, the the average price last year was three hundred and sixty-two thousand and some odd, and the median price was three forty-five. Okay. Okay. So you're capped at three seventy-five. Yeah. Okay. So uh, median means half above, half below. So you're you're above the median, which means you got some good leg room there to look. But you know you're you're in an, in a zone that's going to be pretty competitive. Okay. Okay, because of the average price of the houses in those neighborhoods. Does so that make sense? To yeah. You? What does that mean? You mean like as far as offers or? Well, that what that means is that we have to be careful. Okay. Because if there are other people competing for houses and there's there's multiple offers, the price may go above above asking price. Okay. And I want to make sure we have some leg room in the negotiation to, to off do that if you really want the house. Okay. In other words, I don't want to find a house that's listed for 375 and find out there's four offers and you don't have any room to go up if we need to go up. Okay. I don't want to go up if we don't have to, obviously. Sure. Yeah. But I don't I don't want to stretch your budget too far. Uh, and if you're comfortable in the 350 zone, so we have a little bit of room for to save you some money for closing costs and negotiation and stuff, I, I think that's that's a good move. Uh, I just want you to know that it's a competitive area because that's right where most of the houses are priced. Okay, gotcha. Okay. 
Now, let me roll that into the next stat, which here shows days on market. You know what that means? Have you ever heard that term before? Days on market, how, how long the property has been for sale, right? On average, the houses, that's exactly right. On average, the houses in this neighborhood are selling about 30 days. Okay, okay. Is that so pretty that's, fast? That's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, not, it's not aggressively fast. I've seen it go down in this neighborhood to two weeks, which is really fast, which means you almost have to make a decision right away. Uh, 30 days isn't bad, but it doesn't mean that we have a lot of time to dawdle. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't want to rush you, and I don't want you to be pressured. That's why I want to get out there and look at some houses to make sure you're comfortable with what's going on in the neighborhood. Right. And I want to get you to the point where you've seen enough so you're ready to make a decision so that we can act quickly uh, when the time comes. Gotcha. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah that okay. Makes sense. And again, it's honesty, so if you feel like it's, you know, you need some more time, you're going to take it. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Now, if we take that number that we just talked about, the days on market, this next number is really interesting uh, and important. Two months inventory? Was that in okay, so inventory means if there were no more houses put on the market, how long it would it take to sell the current inventory of houses? Okay, it says, it's, according to this, if no more houses came on the market in 718 and 729, all the houses that are available for now would be sold in two months. During the whole area? Yes. Wow. Okay. okay. Now. The real estate interview says that you needed six months inventory to make the relationship between buyer and seller equal, meaning that buyers, there's enough houses for buyers and sellers, there's enough houses for buyers to look at and make and take, take time and make decisions. It's not, there's no advantage to the seller or the buyer. Mm -hmm. With only two months of inventory, the sellers have the advantage because there's more people looking for houses than there are people, than there are houses to buy if you want to live in that neighborhood. Gotcha. Okay? Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just, it's just reinforcing the point we talked about earlier, that we're going to have to be on our game and look aggressively and act efficiently and quickly when we see what we want. Okay. Okay? And I just want to prepare you for that. All right. Again, this is not a rush. This is just more about, you know, you find the house and fall in love with it, and I want to make sure we have a good chance yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No. And in fact, I'll just be honest with you, Paul, there, there may be times uh, where you find the house and there's two or three offers and we lose the first. But I'm going to make sure we're in the game. Okay. Okay. All right. And lastly, uh, the last number I want to show you is this number right here. That it says it says closed close to list price ratio. What does that mean? It's, this means that that houses are selling at 97 percent of what they're listed for. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about that list price in just a second. But uh, what that means <laughs> is that on average, if the house is listed for 200 thousand. Selling for about 194,000. Okay. Okay. So there's not a lot of down in the, in the price, right? Price there, right? Yeah. And remember, that's an average. So there's actually some that are above list price. Well, that makes sense if, it, if the demand is that high in the zip code. Then yeah. So you're you're crazy. seeing what I'm seeing. Now let's talk a second about list price because this is going to be important when we get out and look at houses. Uh, you have your favorite toothpaste, I'm sure. Like sure. most of us, and you yeah. go shopping for it. You probably have a really good idea how much it costs at Target, and how much it costs at ACB, and how much it costs at Walmart, mm -hmm. right? And you make a decision on where to buy it based on how much it costs, or whether it's convenient to buy it at one place versus another, right? Mm -hmm. But the bottom line there is that there, there, there's pricing parity along all of the different stores. So it's how real estate buyers? Just in, in terms of uh, you can expect a certain toothpaste to be a certain price. Okay, that's it. Yeah. 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 It's, there's not a lot of variety, right? Yeah. Houses don't work that way. Do you know what goes into making the coming up with a list price for the house? No. What? The seller and the listing agent sit down and, and decide. Right. And it's all a function of how emotionally attached the seller is to the price of the house. Mm -hmm. Some some sellers will list the price high because they have to sell it for that price or they feel it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And then the listing agent works with the seller to determine the market, you know, what houses are selling for in the market and tries to come up with a reasonable price to list the house for. But there's no there's no supermarket of houses. All, no two houses are the same, <laughs> right? Right. So there's a lot of variability in that list price. Okay. Okay. So it could be all over a little bit. It could be. It's a function of, of, of how good the two people are at, at coming up with the right price. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm going to do for you when we go out and look at houses is I'm going to sit down when you get close to that one you want, in fact, when you get to the one you want, we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna to talk to you about what comparable houses are selling for and try to present you with some data that shows you what might be reasonable, a reasonable price for that house. Okay. It may be close to the list price, it may not, but I want you to know what I see giving you my experience on the marketplace. 
homes so that when you go into it, you know what you're paying for the house. I don't want you to I don't want you to get attached to the list price, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Let's use the list price as a guide, but let's also remember that we're gonna look at some numbers and make sure that it makes sense. So like understanding if it's if it's, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. You know, if it's if it, the house is underpriced and, and there's an opportunity to grab it, I, I want to make sure we price it appropriately. Maybe we have to be a little high. If it's overpriced, I want to make sure we, we don't overbid. No, that sounds good. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So does that sound good to you? Yeah, I like that. Okay, perfect. So any questions about this? this no, stuff? that was good. Thank All right. You. All right, perfect. All right. So um, all agents use the same MLS data to find a house. Mm -hmm. We all work from the same source. So. Really what it comes down to is you deciding on an agent that you think is going to do what's best for you and working on your, your best interest. And now that we've talked about all this and you have a good understanding of what I do and how the process works, mm -hmm. uh, really it's up to you to decide what you want to do next. Do you want to hire me to get out there and help you find a house? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Are you ready? Are you ready yeah. to go? You feel like I have a good plan? Yeah, it's pretty thorough. Pretty um, thorough, okay. Yeah. Feel like I have a good understanding of what you need and, and where we need to go? Yeah, it was, it was 10 times, I mean, not even the same, uh, same, same thing as far as what we had before. Oh, great, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, 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 just yeah. Send, send me that list. Just okay, well, I, I'm ready to go, uh, and we, we're ready to get started. There's, okay. All we gotta do is sign the paperwork. Oh, okay, what paperwork? We got a couple of documents here. Most, three of them are disclosures that are required for that, that I give you from uh, State, okay. Talk about the house buying process. Okay. And make sure you're aware of certain things. Okay. And then this is the this is the actual buyer representation agreement that gives me the right to act on your behalf uh, and, and looking for a house. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I didn't know there was a like a contract. Uh, it's it's a contract, but it's really more of a contract for me than it is for you. What do you mean? I, I mean that once we enter into this agreement, I am I become fiduciary fiduciarily responsible to do what's in your best interest. Legally, um, legally, I no longer represent the inventory of my broker. I represent you in the market, and I can negotiate on your behalf. I can provide you with insights and, and the benefit of my experience, and help you uh, get get the house you want. That's okay. what this agreement's for. Okay. Okay. So I can do this like commitment to you. I mean, how does that? I, I mean, it it commits me to you. Yes. Okay. Now it it, it gives you the the option to work with me. Uh, and I'll tell you, I want to be honest with you, right? There's a there's a time period here. It says it starts and ends on a certain date. Mm -hmm. But I want to be totally honest with you. I don't want unhappy people. Okay. And if you're not happy with me, I want you to tell me, and we'll just rip this up. Okay. Okay. But once you sign this, I'm committed to you. Okay. okay that's the way. It, that's the way it works. All right. That okay. Makes sense. All right. And and uh, it doesn't mean you have to buy anything. Mm -hmm. It just means that you there's no cost. I mean, like cancellation fee or something. Or? Nothing like that. No. Okay. Just that you're going to represent me when it I just all this means is that I'm going to represent you and I'm going to act in your best interest when we go out and look for a house. I'm going to negotiate with, with other people, and I, I have to do what's your best interest above and beyond. Yeah, I haven't heard of uh, these like signing these agreements. I'm, I'm terrible, that's terrible because yeah. because every agent should be talking to you about this. I'm, uh, yeah, I, last guy didn't bring okay, this well, up. I, I don't need to bring it up. Well, I, I, I can't speak for him. I like to do things professionally, um, and I want to make sure you know what you're getting into. Yeah. And, and this is important. Uh, you can only sign one of these at a time, so this just means we're committed to each other uh, for the pro in, the, in the process of looking for, mm -hmm. looking, looking for a house for you. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. Any questions about this? No, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. Okay. All right. Great. Awesome. Thanks.